In my last video, I showed why Intel could no longer continue with their traditional architecture, and that they needed a new direction in order to compete effectively with AMD's Ryzen 9 lineup. How will the new hybrid architecture with efficiency cores change the game and allow Intel to surpass AMD? Let's get into it. Last time I showed that if Intel continued on that same old path, they would still not have been competitive with AMD's Ryzen 9, and that they have never been competitive with Ryzen 9 on the desktop. AMD changed the game in 2019 when they introduced 12 and 16 cores on a desktop platform in their third generation Ryzen CPUs in the 3900X and the 3950X. And even though Intel pushed their desktop CPUs to 10 cores in their 10th generation Comet Lake, it was not enough to compete with Ryzen 9. AMD and their chiplet technology have provided them with a way to just throw cores at Intel and to make them irrelevant very quickly. Intel was not able to compete with Ryzen 9 CPUs in Cinebench and other multi-core performance benchmarks. Intel tried to convey to the public that those aren't real-world workloads. Intel developed their own set of real-world benchmarks, and they didn't do a very good job at communicating that message. In the end, they just got beat up by the tech press, who just made fun of them. So how will the new hybrid architecture allow them to compete? How does adding efficiency cores help, and how much performance do they add? We don't have specific information yet about the efficiency cores, but we do have some information about them to provide a reasonable estimate. First, we have the information from Intel that the IPC of the efficiency cores in Gracemont is similar to the IPC of Skylake. Second, I ran some tests on my Skylake++ CPU and sweeping the frequency to understand Cinebench performance. Third, we have a ton of leaks out there from which we can sort of triangulate to estimate the differences with and without e-cores. I won't bore you with the details, but take these numbers as ballpark numbers, not actual predictions since we don't understand the thermals and clock speeds of those e-cores yet, but they will be close enough so that we can learn something. Starting with my charts from my last video, the only change is to the i9-12900K estimate of the performance only cores, as it is reduced since it only has 8 cores. When you look at the i5, it will handily beat the Ryzen 5, and the i7 will beat the Ryzen 7. No efficiency cores needed here, but the i9 with only 8 performance cores would trail the Ryzen 9. Now when you add the efficiency cores, wow, look how high those numbers go. The i5 now is not only crushing the Ryzen 5, it is beating the Ryzen 7. And when we look at the i7, it is now crushing the Ryzen 7 and now is on par with the Ryzen 9 5900X with 12 cores. Finally, the i9 with not just 4 efficiency cores like the i5 and i7, but with 8 efficiency cores, it has a score that now beats the mighty Ryzen 9 5950X. By going through this exercise, I now understand why Intel went with what I termed in my last video, the opposite philosophy. If Intel only put in 4 efficiency cores in the i9, they would have had two problems. One, the performance of the i9 would have been too close to their own i7, just like in Rocket Lake where the i9-11900K was just a tiny bit faster than the 11700K. The second problem would have been the i9 performance would still fall short of the Ryzen 9 5950X. There's a saying, if you can't beat them at their own game, change the game. Alder Lake changes the game. It doesn't try to take on AMD's chiplets on a core-for-core -core basis anymore. It is changing to big and little cores to compete with them. With the ability to add four little cores in the same space as one big core, they are able to provide more than double the performance of that one big core and do so at just a fraction of the power. To get a sense of how much power is reduced by running at lower frequencies, like we will see in these efficiency cores, I ran a set of tests on my Skylake++ part. I ran Cinebench R20 from 3 GHz to 5 GHz and recorded the package power. Running my i9-9900K at 5 GHz all-core turbo shows a power consumption of 190 watts. When running the cores at 3.5 GHz, which is what I estimate the efficiency cores will run, shows a power consumption of just 55 watts. That's a massive 71% reduction in power. You can see that the silicon is efficient when you are below 4 GHz, but it rises very quickly once you go above 4 GHz. This type of curve is consistent for silicon, and it is just a physics of the situation. While the absolute values will change depending on process node, the characteristics of this curve is similar. This may explain why Apple's amazingly efficient Apple Silicon in the M1, M1 Pro, and M1 Max chips 
run at a maximum clock frequency of just 3.2 gigahertz. At that frequency, they are really running in the sweet spot for silicon power consumption. Getting back to my counterintuitive feeling of using more efficiency cores on the highest end i9, I now understand why Intel made that move to be more competitive with Ryzen 9. However, the balance of a 50-50 split between performance and efficiency cores just doesn't seem warranted for a desktop. For a desktop CPU, you would want more performance cores and fewer efficiency cores. For a laptop, it makes more sense to have more efficiency cores and fewer performance cores. That is alluded to in Intel's presentation, where you can clearly see more efficiency cores than performance cores as you move to mobile and ultra mobile laptops. However, if I am purchasing a desktop CPU primarily for gaming, then I suspect the i7 will give almost the same performance as the i9, as it has the same eight performance cores. It will be a similar difference as in Rocket Lake where the i9 was just a little bit faster than the i7. This is especially true if the leak is correct in describing the small cores being disabled when gaming in Windows 11 to enable exclusive access to the larger L3 cache. But you may not get that story from the day one review since Intel decided to not send the i7 along for the review. The Intel review kits only have the i9 and the i5 CPUs just like they did with Rocket Lake. They obviously do not want that i7 to i9 comparison. For gaming, Intel seems confident it has the world's best gaming processor. They did show some charts where the one chart with 31 games was on average 13% faster than Rocket Lake. Based on Steve's testing at Hardware Unboxed, he showed the Ryzen 9 CPUs are about 5% faster than Rocket Lake. So the gaming lead Alder Lake will have over Ryzen 9 will drop to single digits, if you're gaming on an RTX 3090, at 1080p. It will be even smaller at 1440p and 4K resolutions. While Intel released its pricing, the actual retail price is higher. Now I tried to purchase the i9 and saw it in stock at Amazon at $707.50. From the time I saw it available to the time I could hit the buy it now button, it was gone. Sold out. Quantities are rumored to only be about 300,000 for all the Alder Lake CPUs this year, with the ramp up really occurring in Q1 next year. So the frustration continues if you want to buy new tech. Coincidentally, the higher price of the i9 is about the same as the lowered price I saw on the Ryzen 9 5950X. I hope price reductions on Ryzen 5000 CPUs finally become realized with the introduction of Alder Lake. If you know you need 8 cores for gaming, the i7 is $200 less expensive than the i9. But for the money, I think the i5 is going to be the best value and most recommended CPU for gaming. I can't wait for the reviews. Thank you all so very much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.